In the diagram, figure G is the image of figure F under a sequence of rigid motions, which means G is the new and F is the original. Fill in the blank with the corresponding letters to describe the sequence that maps F onto G. So the first thing that we need to do is we're going to reflect over line M, which is B. Which will put our shape on this side. And then we need to slide it over, which is the translation. So B, then A. Using those same motions listed above, determine what order of rigid motions need to occur to move from F to G. Write the first motion here and the second motion here. Number one, which set of figures does not belong? We, as a class, decided that this is a dilation and a reflection over the line. This one is a rotation and a dilation to shrink it. And this one is just a dilation from figure or from point K. However, set one is the same size and it's the only one that is the same size. So we decided as a class that set one did not belong because it was the only one without a dilation. Now, there are other arguments that you can make for a different set not belonging. You could say that this was an enlargement, this one was an enlargement, and this one was the same size, so set three is the only one where it was a reduction. But you need to come up with which set does not belong and then explain why. For problems two through six, decide to describe a sequence of rigid motions or dilations or a combination of both that shows one figure is similar to the other. Draw and label any necessary vectors, lines of reflection, centers of rotation, or centers of dilation. So we said that they dilated from center A because they extend along those lines. And we looked at these two distances. Eight divided by two gave us four. So dilate from center A using a scale factor of four. A is already drawn in, so we don't need to worry about centers of dilation because it's already there. Here, one of my students mentioned that you can translate and then dilate. If you use that method, draw in the vector and describe the translation you used and what point you dilated from. Another student pointed out that we could connect them and see if there is a center of dilation that would work. And so you see here that they all cross at a single point. So we said dilate from center O. And then we had to figure out what the scale factor was. So we pulled out our compass. And from here to P, that would be a dilation of 1, 2, and almost three. Here's one, two, and right around three. So using a scale factor, of approximately Now, if our lines were perfect, it should work out to be 
a good skill factor, but there is some human error here. Trapezoid LMNO is similar to trapezoid PQRS. We noticed these were the same size, so we didn't need a dilation. But we do need to move from one point to match up a corresponding point. So we said to start by translating along the vector in R, and we indicate it's a vector using that little half arrow on the top. So that moves this figure here along the vector. And then we notice that we needed to rotate. When we rotate, we need a center of rotation. So rotate around point R. And we need a direction. We're going to go clockwise. And we also need an angle measurement. So we're rotating clockwise 90 degrees. Five. DIG is similar to FAN. If we connect those using a line, we might be able to find a center of dilation. Let's see here. F through D, A through I, and N through O. It appears that they dilated from the origin. So we're going to say dilate from the origin. And we do need to determine a scale factor. So from G to I, that was 3. And from N to A, that's a distance of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So using a scale factor of 2. Because 6 divided by 3 would give us 2. Here we see this is also going to require a dilation because it's a different size. We can pull out our compass as a guide. So let's see, O to C. And then if we compared O and C should we match up with A and R. So there's one and two. So it's a scale factor of one half because it's half the size. This requires two of these. So this one is half of the size. So we're going to shrink it and it should look something like this now. It should be around this size or half the size. And then we need to reflect over this vertical line. So let's draw a vertical line right in the middle of O and A. And then you also need to label it. I'm going to label it, well I would label it L, but all L is already taken. So. We can label it line M. Number seven in the diagram ABCDEF is similar to figure GHIJKL. Find the value of the ratio of each side length in figure G, H, I, J, K, L to its corresponding side length in figure A, B, C, D, E, F. What do you notice? Okay, so we are going to divide the new lengths by the original. G, H is 3, A, B 
is 2. Then we have HI is 3. And BC is 2. IJ and CD. IJ is 3. CD is 2. JK is 3. And DE is 2. KL is 6. And EF is 4. Then we also need AF and GL. AF is 4, GL is 6. So what do you notice? If we were to reduce 6 over 4, we can divide both of those by 2. So they are all equivalent. These are equivalent fractions to 3 over 2. It's just in its reduced form. So 3 over 2 must be the scale factor. Now it says compare the measure of each angle in the figure to the measure of the corresponding angle in the figure. So angle A is a 90 degree, and angle G is a 90 degree. Angle B and H correspond because those are both mentioned second. B is a 90 degree angle, H is a 90 degree angle. I and C correspond to one another. C is 270 because it's 90, 90, 90, 270 as well. J corresponds with D. J is a 90, D is a 90. K corresponds with E. K is a 90, E is a 90. L corresponds with F, L is a 90, F is a 90. So what do you notice? The corresponding angles are all equal in measure. Don't forget to fill in your book and finish up those warm-ups. Check back for Lesson 12.